Town of Presque Valley, regular town council meeting, September 24th, call to order. At this time, I'd like to invite Pastor Lloyd Murphy to come on down, sir, for the invocation. Please stand if you will. Thank you. Let's bow together. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for this day and for this time allotted for this service. I thank you for these servants here uh, who lead our community to preserve and promote our freedom and our prosperity and our uh, justice in this area. And we do pray for wisdom and for clarity tonight that you would grant that and that you'd be honored in all of it. And we ask this in the great name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Sir, please lead us in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Nice job, sir. Clerk, please call the roll. Councilmember Hunt? Here. Councilmember Schumacher? Present. Councilmember Packard? Present. Councilmember Grossman? Still here. Councilmember Anderson? Here. Vice Mayor Nye? Present. Mayor Pulguda? Present. We have a quorum. Mayor. Thank you, ma'am. Move right into proclamations. Tonight's first proclamation will be National Arts and Humanities Month. Who will be joining us for that? Isabel. <laughs> Whereas the month of October has been recognized as National Arts and Humanities Month by thousands of arts and cultural organizations, communities, and states across the country, as well as by the White House and Congress for more than two decades. And whereas the arts and humanities embody much of the accumulated wisdom, intellect, and imagination of humankind, and the arts and humanities enhance and enrich the lives of every American. And whereas the arts and humanities play a unique role in the lives of our families, our communities, and our country. And whereas the nonprofit arts industry also strengthens our community by generating approximately $135.2 billion in total economic activity annually and by supporting the full-time equivalent of 4.13 million jobs. Now, therefore, be it resolved that I, Kel Mayor of the Town of Fresca Valley, do hereby proclaim October as National Arts and Humanities Month in the town of Presque Valley and call upon our citizens to celebrate and promote the arts and culture in our nation and to specifically encourage greater participation in taking action for the arts and humanities in their towns and cities. Hi everyone. So we just want to um, Thank the council and mayor for always supporting the arts um, in Prescott Valley. It's so important. And this October, we're really excited um, to be doing more public art projects than we ever have at one time, which is amazing. You guys will be seeing some resolution to current projects and some new projects coming to life. Um, we have some donated art pieces that are being installed at Fane Park as well. So we'll be seeing um, that publicized in the month of October. We're also going to be doing um, daily Instagram and social media activities, um, sharing community building art uh, relationships on social media. So we're excited about that as well. And um, in our library here, we have our Prescott Valley Fine Art Showcase, our juried show for the year. Um, some of our finest local painters, drawers, and 2D mixed media artists are showcasing their work currently. And as of this um, Friday the 25th, you'll see which artists are um, the winners of those prizes as well. So we're really excited about everything. And thank you, guys. Now moving on, item 5B will be a proclamation for Domestic Violence Awareness Month. 
Whereas domestic violence is a serious crime that affects people of all races, ages, gender, and income levels, domestic violence is widespread and affects over 4 million Americans each year. At least one in three members of our community have witnessed an incident of domestic violence. And whereas children that grow up in violent homes are believed to be abused and neglected at a rate higher than the national average, whereas domestic violence costs the nation billions of dollars annually in medical expenses, police and court costs, shelter, foster care, sick leave, absenteeism, and non-productivity. And whereas only a coordinated community effort will help put a stop to this heinous crime. And whereas Domestic Violence Awareness Month provides an excellent opportunity for a community to learn more about preventing domestic violence and to show support for the numerous organizations and individuals who provide critical advocacy services and assistance to victims. Now, therefore, I call Pagura, Mayor of the Town of Prescott Valley, Arizona, to hereby proclaim the month of October as Domestic Violence Awareness Month and urge all of our citizens to work together with one goal in mind, to eliminate domestic violence from our community. Um, yes, thank you, Council Members and Mayor and um, Larry, Town Manager. On behalf of the Avapai Family Advocacy Center, I, um, I just want to say thank you so much. Many of you have been to the center and um, understand what we do, and really this whole uh, town has embraced the, um, the need to support our most vulnerable citizens, which are victims of interpersonal crime, uh, including domestic violence, and I'm just really proud to say that this month in October, uh, we will celebrate our birthday of, or anniversary, I should say, 20 years. Um, the Yavpai Family Advocacy Center has been in Prescott Valley, and we just couldn't ask for a better home. Guys, we're going to mix it up a little bit. We're going to skip six right now, and we're going to go to seven, and then go right back to six. So, um, service award five years for our young adult library assistant, Colleen Borschlegel. Yeah. yeah, she gets a yeah. clap for that. Ready, Colleen? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to start out with a little story on how we got to know Colleen. Um, that starts off with our adult services librarian, Michelle Yortine, tells a story about how she met Colleen. Colleen came to light with a happenstance meeting with our adult services librarian, Michelle. She met Colleen on the airport shuttle from Sky Harbor to Prescott. They started chatting and found common ground like they both lived in Portland. Somehow, the topic of jobs came up and the library had an opening for a part-time library assistant in circulation and Colleen, uh, Michelle encouraged Colleen to apply for it. Michelle mentioned to me that she had, she had met Colleen and told her about the position and hoped I'd give her a shot with the interview. And I remember interviewing her like it was yesterday. She was like a ray of sunshine. She had energy and the interview was like a conversation with an old friend. Needless to say, we hired you. And, and the one thing that we love to do here at the library is we like to cultivate talent, and Colleen has ama amazing talent. Uh, she is an artist, and we always here at the library let people work outside the box. It's just, it's just what we do. Colleen became our resident artist. She is passionate about public service and teaching. She has taught our creative aid, uh, aging grant classes, adult coloring, designed murals throughout the library, created art classes for our teens, and even created our book Christmas tree for a holiday parade float. 
As this was her first library job, she came in with no misconceptions of what a library should be and used her artistic flair to create and uh, dynamic and much needed community art programs. But the one thing that we're most proud of Colleen is her drive to always improve herself. She applied and was accepted to graduate school for her Master's of Library and Information Science. Everybody get your Master's in Library Science. <laughs> This is a huge commitment, but Colleen is up for it. She has grown tremendously in the last five years, and just when we think she has outdone herself, she surprises us. Bobby? So just to add on to uh, all of the praise you've already gotten, Presque Valley is stronger, kinder community because we have Colleen serving this town. She's given her time and her talents towards helping the youth of this community find connections, education, and support. She has helped so many people express themselves through words and art, both in good times and difficult times. Even in the area of social distance, she found ways to connect with the community and give them ways to read, create, and share, and strengthen our community. Just a few of her accomplishments include starting an art club and finding community experts willing to share their knowledge and talents with our youth, teaching kids how to code, use a 3D printer, preparing them for future where tech skills <clears throat> will be vital, creating weekly summer programs to help prevent the loss of valuable skills when schools are on break, and providing a kind listening ear to every single person who enters our library. We're both lucky and grateful that Colleen has served this library and this community for the last five years, and hope she will continue to use her talents to help the youth of this town follow their passions and curiosity for many years to come. Thank you. All right, folks, we're going to move back to item six, something we haven't done in a while, which is kind of exciting that we're doing it again tonight. So this will be student of the month. Uh, Are we not doing student of the month? We pulled. We, guess what? You know what? It's not exciting tonight, folks, because we're not having it. <laughs> so that's what I get for having this old one. So. But we do have something almost equally as exciting. So award for Prescott Valley Comprehensive Annual Financial, Financial Report, 2018 to 2019. <laughs> Good evening, Mayor, Vice Mayor, and Council. I'm pleased to be able to um, bring our 23rd Annual Certificate of Achievement for Excellence in Financial Reporting for the Town's CAFR, which is our Comprehensive Annual Financial Report. And that's basically, for anyone out there that doesn't know, it's our town financial statements. It shows where money came from during the year as well as where it went. It shows all of our outstanding obligations, as well as other interesting information about our community. We're really pleased to um, bring this award to you all. Uh, we haven't gotten our little uh, icon yet for 2019, but that'll be arriving um, soon. But we did get the official award, and just wanted to thank the entire um, finance team who does an amazing job, and without all their efforts, um, Irina Irmakova, our finance manager, and Lisa Sim Simrak, our um, senior accountant, are a tremendous help, as well as um, uh, Pam Gray is our current administrative supervisor, but um, last year we actually had uh, LaToya, who's in the back, helped with uh, the CAFR that we received this award for, because um, they're about a year lag. So anyway, um, with that, Thank you all. Katie, congratulations. You and your team are just truly amazing, and you set the bar high year after year, so that's something to be extremely proud of. Thank you. And I want you to stay for at least 20 years. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Let's give a round of applause to Katie and her team. Thank you all. Moving right along, item 
eight. Council comments. Councilman Packard, we'll start on the end with you. I think. Councilwoman. Vice Mayor. I had the privilege today of taking a brother and sister in law that are visiting from Texas over to the Bronze Smith. And since we did arts and humanities, I wanted to tell you I got to show off our wonderful obelisk that is in process there at the Bronze Smith. And, you know, we already love the design, but now there's much more detail available, much more information. And you're welcome to go to the Bronze Smith and check it out. I was sure glad I did today. And I'll probably go again in a couple more weeks because, boy, they're moving along. Councilman? Councilwoman. So um, we have all these awesome things on consent that a lot of people don't get to hear about. So I like to pick out one or two. And today I'd like to talk about um, the outreach that the library is doing. They're actually doing books on wheels, and that's what they're promoting this last month, which is um, working with Meals on Wheels and AZ Casa. They're trying to get more books out to seniors. So that's kind of an awesome thing. And then we also have our August report for um, revenue and expenses. And so it was fabulous information on the general fund revenue. Granted, we lowered projections for revenue, but even with that, our sales tax, building permits, sh state shared revenues, and pool reserves are exceeding projections 20.28%. And um, as opposed to last year, they were 34.84% higher. So thank you for shopping locally and pulling building permits. Um, I attended the third annual AZ Drug Summit, Uniting the Solutions. Um, Sheila Polk was a speaker, and Matt Force was a sponsor here locally. I also listened in on one of the webinars for Voices of Domestic Victims, which I thought was, uh, it was also called Drug Use is a Non-Victimless Crime. And I also listened in on Hope Still Floats. Missy was just here, their annual fundraiser. So it seems applicable to mention these since we're observing domestic Violence Awareness Month. And then we also have a press release coming out, and I want to read um, one paragraph. It's The title of it is, Stricter Water Guidelines Have Regulated Growth in Prescott Valley. So um, state law does not allow for, for the creation of new residential lots or the division of larger parcels until water allocation for those lots is approved by the Arizona Department of Water Resources. Additionally, water allocations have slowed as state laws have become more restrictive. So just in the last 20 years, we've issued or only 360 some lots, which is the Jasper subdivision, have come online. So a little bit of information for everybody. Thank you, ma'am. Moving on, I have nine, consent agenda. All matters listed under consent agenda are considered routine by the town council. It will be enacted by one motion. There will be no separate discussion of these items. If discussion is desired, that item will be removed from the consent agenda and will be considered separately. Can we get a motion? Council, we've had a chance to review the consent agenda. If we haven't anything we need to remove, then I'll take a motion. I'd like to make a motion to approve the consent calendar. I'll like second. second. Okay. <laughs> Clerk, please call the vote. Mayor Pulguda? Um, yes. Council Member Grossman? Yes. The pass is unanimously, Mayor. Thank you, ma'am. Apparently, I'm not logged in. Hmm. <laughs> All right, moving on to item 10A proposed zoning map change, ZMC 20 003, whistle stop, second reading. Clerk? An ordinance of the mayor and common council of the town of Prescott Valley, a municipal corporation of Arizona, amending the town zoning map ZMC 
0-3 by changing the zoning classification of parcels from RSPAD, Residential and Services Planned Area Development Zoning 2, C2PAD, Commercial General Sales and Services Planned Area Development Zoning, and providing that this ordinance shall be effective 30 days after its passage and approval according to law. Clerk, shall this ordinance pass? That passes unanimously, Mayor. Thank you, ma'am. Moving on, item 11A, approval of Prescott Valley Civic Center Fountain Project. Mr. Davis, welcome. Well, Mayor Council, I don't see my slides being loaded, so we'll just do without them. So I think we can be Mayor Council, the item we have uh, before you is uh, the Jenkins Trust left uh, money for aesthetic improvements uh, for various uses, and there's quite a few planned for the Civic Center grounds here. One of those is that uh, we're going to move forward with is uh, putting in a fountain in the area that has always been planned for a fountain. As we're going, I'll talk, and hopefully she pulls it up. So there's always been a slot here at the Civic Center for a fountain immediately adjacent to the Theater on the Green uh, roof and stage. And actually, we've added quite a few improvements. You know, one of those was the Theater on the Green stage. And of course, there was a, uh, a statue added to the grounds, too, that uh, we've added several things since over the last time I've been here. So this is what we're looking at. This is the area that original site plan for the um, Civic Center build, the grounds here back in 99. This area was uh, set aside for a fountain and uh, has never been equipped with the fountain equipment. So this is immediately adjacent to Theodore on the Green. This is south looking north towards Lake Valley and Lakeshore. So you can see this is the area that's always been planned for a fountain. And looking at from down below, you can see, uh, you know, the statue, the um, uh, added in, in the past, the not so gentle tamer. As you can see, this is what will cascade down through uh, as the fountain equipment is put in, and this is the area that's going to be. So it's already been basically a lot of the framework place and a lot of the expenditure made. So going back to this slide, just to explain a little bit. So this has been, you know, already outfitted. So really the scope of what's going to go on is the existing dirt that was put in between the cascading of the fountain. That will be excavated. There'll be um, a water sealer put in against the concrete, and we'll be able to install uh, fountain equipment. In addition to some of the cascading, we'll put some landscape rock in the bottom and let you uh, see what's going on. The plan is the bottom steps will be filled in with concrete in addition to the side um, opposite there. So the water at the top there, at the top, um, will cascade down into the bottom and recircular. So that's what we've got planned. So staff went out and talked with uh, fountain suppliers and Vicente Landscaping can do the work and turned in a quote for $23,183 in order to provide the fountain equipment and some of the, the rock to make this come to reality as aesthetic appeal for this particular fountain. So with that, we have to answer any questions council may have. Any questions, Vice Mayor? No questions, Norm. You mentioned it, but I want to make sure everybody heard it. We've been waiting for this since 1999. And I'm so excited that before I leave the council, something I voted for in 1999 as an Arts and Culture Commissioner is coming to pass. Uh, these features are, are important, they're soothing, our citizens love them, and I'm just so happy, and thank you, Larry. Councilman? Yeah, uh, uh, again, something that you said that I want to make sure that everybody in the audience heard that the water in this uh, will be recirculated. It will, be, uh, it will not be using constantly new water. It will be circulated. I'm sure there'll be a certain loss to uh, evaporation, but we'll get through that and it shouldn't be an insignificant amount. So, Council. Norm, um, when we're having an event on stage. We'll be able to turn this off so it's not overpowering or kids aren't over there splashing around during an event? I guess depending on the event, that might be a nice amenity. So I would imagine <laughs> it'll have an on-off switch. But I don't think we thought it that far. So. Okay. But We original planners did. <laughs> oh. 
You know, and I think it's important to, to note once again is the Jenkins Trust uh, is where the fundings come from this. So it's a real nice. Absolutely. And, it's really and cool. you know, for all these aesthetic appeals that, you know, really, um, you know, the trees we've added in the last few years is really um, getting to be quite a nice, aesthetically pleasing area. What to put on the events? Councilwoman? And Norm, one other question. Is this going to be like a wishing fountain that they can also throw coins into and make a wish? That was a great part of childhood, you know? <laughs> And I, I would imagine, yes, just about every fountain turns into that by experience. So uh, <laughs> we're working now just to equip it and get it ready. But I'm sure okay. as we continue to operate amenities like this, they uh, morph into things that we can, that awesome. we can continue to manage. I, I wanted to add, um, Arizona Center down in Phoenix, they have such interesting water features. And... They have a very special one with big smiling frogs in it. I rubbed that frog's head so <laughs> often when I was there for meetings that it altered the color on the top of his head. Didn't get your prints, but you got your fountain yes. finally. Okay. I, I didn't always get my wish, <laughs> but I just want to make the point, again, how beloved and soothing and calming these are and that's why the original planners put it in place and that's the piece i forgot to say before thank you mr davis with that being said can we get a motion to approve i'd like to make a motion a motion to approve the proposal and contract from wellborn investments llc doing business as vincente landscaping in the amount of twenty three thousand one hundred eighty three dollars and seventy cents for the civic center fountain project cip Number F four eight zero by electronic vote. I'll second. Clerk, please call the vote. That passes unanimously, Mayor. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Mr. Davis. Item eleven B settlement agreement, joint facility, library, and college wing litigation. Who will be addressing that? I'll do that, Mr. Mayor. Mayor and Council, uh, we're grateful to have the opportunity tonight to present to you a settlement agreement that has been reached in the litigation related to this building. Uh, it'll uh, uh, be a request that you ratify the agreement. It's already been approved with all of the other parties, but uh, we do ask that you go ahead and sign it and ratify it so that we can send it to the other parties and start receiving the money that they've agreed to pay as uh, part of the settlement. You might remember that uh, we were dealing with issues in this building for a long time. And uh, many efforts would, were made over a period of years to try to resolve those issues. You know, litigation just isn't the way to do things. And uh, uh, we, we tried pretty hard in uh, 2015 and uh, the early part of 2016 to reach a settlement with all the parties. It just didn't work out. And so we spent the end of 2016 to begin the litigation process, and we actually filed litigation in January of 2017. It's been a while. We uh, worked at uh, trying to mediate for a while. Uh, when uh, we started in earnest, unfortunately, the COVID virus arrived, <laughs> and uh, that made uh, the mitigation and mediation process a little bit difficult. Um, to be honest, we, we had some challenges because of all the number of parties. There were at least, uh, they were, there were eight subcontractors listed, but I think there were twice that many subcontractors involved. And also there was uh, the, the general contractor and the uh, architect. And uh, when you've got millions of dollars involved and uh, dozens of attorneys and insurance companies, it's simply difficult to bring things together. I'd like to uh, have a, a shout out, if you will, to uh, Judge Krista Carmen. When uh, we were uh, looking at simply going to trial, and we had a trial date set for January of 2021, Judge Carmen told us, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm being reassigned. And so once again, you're gonna get a new judge. This was like the third time we were getting a new judge. But she said, I'll take some time and I'll do a judicial settlement conference with all of the parties. And that ended up being the final resolution. It brought it all together. 
I, I also need to shout out for Stephen uh, Zrake mm -hmm. and uh, Bill Osborne. They sat in that courtroom for several days. Woo and, uh, they worked very well, very hard uh, with Judge Carmen. And we were finally able to bring this process to an end after all of these years. Uh, it was a $6.2 million settlement. We're very grateful for that amount. We believe that that will go a very long way towards uh, reimbursing the town for what it's already spent and also allowing the town to finish up uh, the fixes that need to be made in this building. I'd like to uh, thank again Stephen and Bill for their hard work. This was really kind of Stephen's baby. He spent hours and hours and hours and hours on the phone uh, dealing with our own outside counsel, all of our uh, experts. Uh, he was involved in all of the uh, uh, depositions that we held. Um, so it, it, it's, been, it's been quite a process. We're grateful also to the town manager who at different times looked at us and said, are you guys ever going to get this done? <laughs> and uh, he had the patience to let us continue the process and uh, eventually bring it in to a, a good result. We'd like to thank Carol Cornell, uh, who is uh, always that long distance uh, voice of reason that we rely on so often, and she helps us so much with the documents and uh, helped us coordinate with the outside counsel. We had two law firms in California uh, who helped us a great deal. And uh, again, all of the different uh, uh, experts that we had from all over uh, the Western United States dealing with this case. So again, we're, we're grateful to have this resolution and uh, urge you to go ahead and authorize the mayor to sign it. And uh, we'll start collecting the money and go forward from there. It may be that Bill Osborne uh, wants to tell you about what he's going to do with that money. Yes. Maybe another time, Bill? Do you want to come down? I feel like that was Ivan's like Oscar award-winning speech acceptance right there. Just thanking everybody. <laughs> no, they just had the Emmys, wasn't it? No, no, unprepared, totally. <laughs> well, the main thing that we really have to look at is some of the, uh, what we refer to as the building envelope. We need these walls in here to seal up and provide us uh, what this needs to be, this auditorium have it function in the manner it should. We'll do a lot of work on the uh, galvalume, which is the perforated metal on that, try and clean that up. Um, we're also looking at uh, doing some uh, graffiti and vandalism prevention by uh, bringing in something of a wainscoting with a material that would stand up better to skateboards and bicycles and whatever else they, they come up with to uh, destroy things with. We also have, are working to find substitutions for the black panels so that we actually have that beautiful black uh, finish on the building that uh, will really look good and uh, function. The, uh, I guess the other main one is the polycarbonate, the plastic panels that are on the second story. They, um, in wind-driven rain, they, they puddle up very well. They, it blows right through, so we don't have a weatherproof. Uh, a seal on those portions of the building will work to take care of that, which should help us with the HVAC issues that we have because it won't have to try and, it's like, you know, growing up we always got it. You left the door open, we're not trying to cool the whole outside, shut the door, you know? Well, that's what we're going to try and do with uh, taking care of those so that, that uh, the other equipment has a chance to function and, and give us what we need for it. Those are just a couple of the things. Awesome. Thanks, Bill. Appreciate it. One, one thing, the next time you drive past the library and you take a look at the cone, the silver element in the, in the very uh, center of the library, and it's starting to look dirty, that's manufactured. <coughs> that is rust, and it's not supposed to be rusted, yep. but the manufacturing process that they use didn't seal that steel. And that's unacceptable. So that's just one element of what Bill's talking about. Thank you, Bill. You bet. And again, thanks to Stephen. You couldn't have said it better, Ivan. Stephen's truly like our 
super secret weapon over there, and uh, it's like releasing the bulldog on, on people. So <laughs> I heard of many a days going back and forth on the phone discussing this project. So, Stephen, thank you for what you do for us. Yes. Um, I'd like to give some background from the council point of view on this. Um, I was a council rep representative on this committee, and we were so excited and we were so pleased, but sadly we were had. And so this is really personal to me. And Stephen, I remember all of the conversations we've had over these years, and they were full of angst. Stephen, we knew that we were right and quite frankly, while I maybe never said this to you or Ivan or Larry, I always believed we would prevail because we weren't the ones that provided disinformation or whatever. I'll just give one example. The black panels we were told would last a minimum of 50 years, a minimum. They didn't even make it five, come on. So. This is a giant achievement, and this is a fabulous building and a fabulous complex, and now it will end up as those of us who worked so hard envisioned it. Now it will be reality. So thank all of you, and that includes you, Bill. That being said, can we get a motion? I'll make a motion. Motion to approve the settlement agreement in the joint facility litigation and ratify the early consent given on the court record to the global settlement by electronic vote. Let me second. Clerk, please call the vote. That passes unanimously, Mayor. Thank you, ma'am. Moving on, item 12, comments from the public. Consideration and discussion of general unscheduled comments from the public. Those wishing to address the council need not request permission in advance. Any such remarks shall be addressed to the council as a whole and not to any member thereof. Such remarks shall be limited to three minutes unless additional time is granted by the mayor. At the conclusion of the unscheduled comments, individual members of the council may respond to the item addressed at the discretion of the mayor, or they may ask the town manager to review the matter or ask that the matter be placed on a future agenda. With that being said, folks, now is your time. So. I see hands going up, and I usually go ladies first, so let's go front row ladies first, and then we'll go from there. And please just remember just to state your name for the record. Hi, I'm Mary Axelrod, and I live in the Granville subdivision. Um, I'm happy to be here, Mayor, Vice Welcome. Mayor, and Council Members. <laughs> Thank you for having I just wanted to discuss a little issue I'm having. And from what I understand, uh, there's been other complaints as well. It's not really a complaint, it's an issue that I'm having. So I don't you know, want to come on as getting anybody defensive or anything like that. But uh, I, if I can refer you to the map, it's a crudely drawn map, but it's a map nonetheless, kind of last minute. Um, there's a little strip of road um, you know where the Jasper Homes subdivision is, Jasper Parkway and all that. Well, there's a little stretch of road right next to the dog park um, on Granville Parkway, and it has no stop sign, yield sign, um, speed limit, slow down signs, and it's causing a little bit of an issue because not just with cars, because there's a stop sign on the Granville, right here, Granville, Parkway, there you see the stop signs, there's two. There's none on Santa Fe and there's none, there's nothing on this other one and it's causing a little issue because people are trying to cross over, not just with cars, but walking pedestrians, bikers, and I see it because I walk my dog twice, twice a day on that road and I see it. It's an issue and it's because the cars go fast, like a freeway. Autobahn, they're just barreling through there because they have, you know, no limitations. Um, so my issue is that I wanted to discuss is to try to slow these people down a little bit. Um, I understand that it's the um, cars 
have to abide by the stop signs that are on, on both sides. But I'm kind of concerned that something really bad is going to happen. Pedestrians, dogs, bikers, cars, something bad is going to I'm thinking something bad. Is, I'm just putting it out there. I don't know if anything will. I hope nothing does. I've seen an accident already happen um, because people aren't used to looking up that way. You know, um, so they just go. And there's no left, there's no sign either um, on Santa Fe Loop on, um, to turn left or right. So that's another th issue, you know, right there. I, you know, I, I don't know about that. I'm kind of used to that myself. I've been living there for a couple of years. But I don't know if it's really um, Prescott Valley's issue about this stretch of time, the stretch of road. Just going to have to wrap it up a little bit, ma'am. Yeah, I'm about to wrap it okay. up. But I left some concerns on, the, on another paper that you can read on, you know, when you have time. But in closing, you know, that's just it. I just want them to kind of slow down a little bit. Thank you. Thank you very much, ma'am. And uh, Mr. Davis is in the back row there. I don't know if he has a copy of this. Well, and, and if you would, Mr. Mayor, I'll go ahead and ask uh, the police chief, Mr. Roser, to go ahead and look at enhanced deployment of, uh, of officers and also the speed trailer to be located out there. Although, it's very important to make note of something, and that is that uh, Granville uh, Parkway has a stop condition in e each direction and Santa Fe, the traffic that you see on Santa Fe Loop now is a small fraction of what you're going to see on that road uh, because there's a roundabout at Jasper that's going to connect, connect to Highway 69 and so it would be disingenuous on our part to say that we're going to slow or eliminate traffic on Santa Fe Loop because ultimately Santa Fe Loop will be two lanes in each direction. With that, with that being said, we're going to just move on and yeah. we'll get uh, your information over to Mr. Davis and the chief. Ma'am, I believe you're up next. All right, just pull that, pull the microphone down a little bit lower for you. And just I was told I have five minutes, so my whole spiel is five minutes, but thank you, Mr. Mayor and City Council. I'm liable to offend people here because some of the things I'm going to say you're really not familiar with, but you're going to become familiar with them. My name is Jody Smith. I'm here because of the recent events in Portland, Seattle, Minneapolis, New York City, and Phoenix. I'm here to get the vibe of the Prescott Valley City Council environment. I got your vibe. It's really different from where I come from, but please do not hold that against me. I come east. Okay? Mm -hmm. No, west, sorry. Um, I'm not a, I, I don't mean to offend anyone here. However, I may offend you because old mindsets are rooted in, are not rooted and grounded in, in what I think is law. Um, I just like to point out that all political power is inherent in the people. That's me, and you all are public servants. No offense, I respect you and your office. There's a few things that I think the city council lacks and is unaware of what the city of the people want. So I'm going to name them three things. One, there's lots of businesses here in Prescott Valley that do not allow you to go in without a mask. You have ADA on your website, and I would like you to send letters to these businesses, such as Sprouts, who will not let people with disabilities in because they can't wear a mask. And if you, if you don't, then take it off your website, because that's hypocritical to me. Okay, the second thing is open the schools. If teachers refuse to come back to teach in classrooms, then hire new teachers. Unions and teachers do not dictate to the people their demands, especially when the people pay their salaries and administration costs, costs through property taxes. Parents have been teaching their kids in 2020, not teachers. The city council will not pay, play politics with teachers' union. Zoom teaching is invasive. In fact, frankly, it violates our Fifth Amendment. Um, I don't want my tax monies uh, this year going towards uh, the teacher administrations and teachers. They didn't teach most of the year. Zoom teaching and packets don't qualify as teaching. The parents have been teaching the children. 
So what do we have to lose by hiring new teachers? The third thing I'd like was the city council to work with the board, city board, Yapa Vive County City Board, to refund half of my property taxes, about $3,000 that I'm paying to teacher administration and teachers. Um, Arizona has no collective bargaining statute with the government of Arizona. There's no contract between teachers and unions. Therefore, we can hire teachers. These are things political in nature. I also want to know my mayor is uh, not going to let a BLM in, uh, organization or Antifa or anything that's not a Republican form of government take over the city. Constitution. You're, you're on a roll, man. I mean, can I just say one more thing? Bit. You may ask me what gives me the right to this. Okay, well, the Declaration of Independence does. I've read it. So does the Arizona Constitution. I've read it. I've read thousands of regulation statutes in this state. It says here I can do it. All experience has shown that mankind are more disposed to suffer while evils are sufferable than to right themselves themselves by abolishing the forms to which they are accustomed. To secure my rights, governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed. This is a declaration of independence. This, in my opinion, besides the Bible, the next best document there is. We can throw off government so we can lay again the foundation and principles organizing its powers in such form as to us shall seem most likely to affect our safety and happiness. Thank you for your time. Ma'am, thank you for your time. Oh? I said thank you for your time. Mm -hmm. Who's next? Sir, come on down. Welcome. Welcome. Uh, Mr. Mayor, Vice Mayor, Council, I appreciate it. My name is David Griego. I own Sunburst Patios here in, in Prescott Valley. Uh, Sunburst has been here for about 20 years. We bought it about three years ago. Um, we ran into a, situa a situation recently here in town that really is devastating to our business. And it's really making us wonder, did we make the right decision to put our money advertising everything we put into this community? Um, and so there is apparently a situation where there is a density law on the books that's about 24 years old since somebody's seen it last or made any revisions for it. Uh, the last 17 years, my predecessors never heard of it. Recently, in the last three years, I've never heard of it. But then I submitted 10 permits for Prescott Valley at one time, um, and all of a sudden, seven of them got rejected. Apparently, the 40% density rule is in effect where you can only build roof line of 40%. What I found on most of those is that the house is already built at like 48%. So it literally took $35,000 out of my pocket and my wife's pocket. Um, and it's, it's devastating to a small company like me. It needs to be looked at, it needs to be figured out. I have to go back to these homeowners and say, I can't do nothing for you. You bought a house that literally you thought you were going to have a staycation home that is not a staycation home because you can't do anything. It was overbuilt to begin with. Um, I've met with uh, the city here. We've come up with a slight resolution to have an open cover. If they want some shade, then we have a resolution for that. But most of the seven, there was five of them that literally they want solid cover. They have outdoor furniture. They have plans for, you know, expanding their backyard. And it's, it's devastating to me that all of a sudden, after 20 years of this sunburst patios being here, in one week, this situation comes up. It wasn't like it was just written. It wasn't just like it was just put in. So I'm asking you guys for your help so that I can can continue to put my dollars into Prescott Valley. I have a beautiful showroom that I've invested tons of money in. People come in there left and right. They want outdoor space. They want to use their outdoor patio areas in bigger and bigger and bigger ways, but they can't, you know? And it's, it's uh, something I thought I'd just come to you guys, ask you to take a look at the situation, 
Uh, I built over 150 covers since August of 2019 to August of 2020 in Prescott Valley that were approved. <coughs> Have some here in Granville that they're the, you know, the condo kind of, you know, mm -hmm. where they're attached. This neighbor has a patio cover and has more square footage on her house, but this lady has less square footage and she's denied. They're, they're attached. So I'm in a situation where I'm trying to defend Sunburst patios at the same time, I'm trying to figure out like, you know, how do we do this together? How can we all come together and figure this solution out? Absolutely, sir, and I wanna thank you for coming. Uh, we're gonna direct staff to put this on work study agenda. Let's at least review it, see what they're talking about and see if there's any changes. I'm sure outdoor living has changed since it like, has. you know, <laughs> for many years ago. So Absolutely. it doesn't hurt to just get a fresh set of eyes on it and see what we're talking about. So okay. thank you for coming here, sir. Thank you, I appreciate you guys' time. Thank you. Next. I don't think you need any introduction, ma'am. <laughs> Mayor, Council, Vice Mayor, I thank you. Sandy Griffiths, Yavapai County Contractors Association. I'm here tonight to support Sunburst Patios with this challenge that has recently appeared out of the clear blue. And the town does have a zoning ordinance that was put together 41 years ago that affected density zones and density lot coverage. The zoning ordinance was last changed 24 years ago. So I'd like to ask, and thank you, Mary, you've already made that suggestion, that collectively, as a group, as an industry, as business owners, that we look at maybe giving this ordinance a facelift and make it more palatable for our other homeowners to enjoy their backyard living, their pergola covers, their patio extensions. I have a homeowner who purchased a home. He was already over the density coverage by 521 feet, but whoever knew that, he now wants to extend his covered patio by a mere 85 square feet to allow he and his wife to have more sun on their covered patio. He can't do it. I have some ideas. I am excited that maybe with the work study and we can work together with business owners and the industry to come up with a solution that will allow covered patios, pergola covers, and everybody can enjoy their backyard staycations, I guess. So thank you. You're very welcome, ma'am. Thank you for coming in. Next up. It's been a busy, sir, welcome. I can't remember the last time we've had this many people speak. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, uh, Madam Vice Mayor and Town Council, I just wanted to introduce myself. I'm John Podesta. I'm the new superintendent for the Humboldt Unified School District. And I wanted to be here tonight and say hello and let you know that I'm in the community. Uh, it's been an interesting beginning to our school year. Uh, I am proud to say that we are starting school uh, in person in just a couple of weeks. Uh, it's been a hard transition for us, but we're very excited to have people back. We, talking to my predecessor, the relationship that the school district has had with the town, uh, it's been a very good relationship and I am very much looking forward to continuing that very positive working relationship with each other. So I just wanted to introduce myself and uh, say I'm excited to be a part of this community and working with you. Thank you. Welcome, sir. Thank you. Thank you for coming out. Anyone else? With that being said, we'll close comments from the public. And now I'm looking for a motion to convene into executive session. Motion to convene into executive session to discuss or consult with designated representatives of the public body to consider its position and instruct its representatives regarding negotiations for purchase or lease of real property. 
for long-term economic development purposes in accordance with ARS 38-431.03 A7 and B, and to conduct the annual review and evaluation of town attorney Ivan Legler pursuant to ARS 38-431.03 A1. So moved. I'll second. Clerk, call a vote. That passes unanimously, Mayor. Thank you. So, folks, for those of you not familiar with this, we're going to have to ask to clear the room. Um, you're more than welcome to hang around and wait for us to open it back up, but unfortunately, you can't stick around.